I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you because I've got a story I think you want to hear. It's about the new Metropolitan, and I'm sure you're excited and enthusiastic about it. If you've already driven it, you certainly are. If, on the other hand, you haven't, well, you better get the keys and drive it, because you're really missing a thrill. You know, it's a Nash, and the very presence of the Nash nameplate means it's well-built, attractively styled, a good performer, and sensible from a service standpoint. Now, there are some very interesting things about this car that a casual glance might not reveal. Since you're going to be selling the Metropolitan, we'd like to tell you about some of these things. They'll help you in your selling. Bound to. So concentrate on these mechanical details. Not only because the Metropolitan is different from any other car, but because a great many prospects for a car of this type will be mechanical-minded enthusiasts who will appreciate and be interested in superior mechanical construction. Let's first consider the enclosed front wheels, the continental tire mount, and the distinctive grille, which all identify the Metropolitan as a member of the Nash family. And the three-piece wraparound rear window treatment lets you see exactly what's behind particularly valuable when backing into a tight place. And of course, you can get into tight places with a short wheelbase of 85 inches and the overall length of only 149 and a half inches, making this an extremely maneuverable car. Now, just look at the thickness of this door. That's because passenger safety is vital. And this door gives you a clue to the way the whole car is built with unitized air flight construction. The same all welded single unit construction you've been selling in the Ambassador, Statesman and Rambler series. A cutaway view shows the foundation for this car's structural rigidity. All body and frame members welded to form a single unit. Indeed, this type of construction on the short wheelbase allows the convertible model to be made without overhead structural rail. Also visible from the underside is the famous Airflex front suspension, the same type used in all Nash cars. Not only does this give an amazingly smooth ride, but the positioning of the long coil springs directly over the wheel makes cornering firm and safe, gives the driver perfect control at all times. Not only that, but this suspension system allows caster and camber to be built in. The only adjustment ever required is the toe-in setting. And still another safety factor is the hydraulic brake system, designed to give maximum braking with little pedal effort because each front wheel brake uses two cylinders, actuating the brake shoes so both take equal advantage of the rotation of the wheel to provide smooth, effortless braking action. And remember, the brake linings are permanently bonded to the brake shoes. If new brake linings are required, factory bonded brake linings and shoes are obtainable. And this is important. The Metropolitan is designed to American specifications for American drivers, for use on American roads, by an American firm, up to American standards of safety, comfort, and yes, performance. For underneath this hood is one of the finest power plants ever placed in a car of this type. A 42 horsepower Austin engine, modified and engineered to American standards for the best combination of durability, performance, and economy. And here it is. Notice the compact design, how the engine offers complete accessibility. Now this matter of accessibility is important as many prospects for this type of car are tinkerers, men who like to do their own servicing as a hobby. Notice that the engine is the overhead valve type, the same kind that's made the Ambassador engine such a respected power plant. The advantage of this system is maximum power and operating efficiency from a given displacement because of freer fuel entry into the combustion chamber. The Metropolitan is equipped with a three-speed standard shift synchro mesh transmission. 
not a transmission with four forward speeds. In fact, the only reason so many smaller cars use four-speed transmissions is that they're so underpowered that a three-speed transmission won't get them going fast enough. So the driver has to constantly down and up shift as he goes through traffic and around corners. Now, your prospects may wonder if a four-cylinder car will be smooth enough. You should tell them that the type of counterbalanced crankshaft used in the Metropolitan engine, as well as the use of rubber engine mountings properly located, results in exceptional engine smoothness. Now, another engine feature which will be new to your prospects is this fuel pump primer. Most of us don't run out of gas once a year. But if we do, we may have trouble. Trouble getting started again after refueling. But with the Metropolitan, all you do is pump this primer a few times and you're ready to go. Without the risk of running down the battery trying to pump gas with the starter. And speaking of pumping gas, this tube is a deflutter, a relief tube for quickly and automatically draining the carburetor of excess fuel in case you should accidentally flood it. The carburetor itself uses a manual choke, but with a unique automatic throttle pickup linkage to speed up the engine when it's choked in order to eliminate stalling. Now for the electrical system. Your Metropolitan uses a 12-volt electrical system instead of the usual 6-volt system. The use of a 12-volt system offers many advantages to the owner. Better starting in cold weather due to increased cranking speed. Higher generator output for electrical accessories and improved ignition performance. Because of the 12-volt system, you'll notice a different type of starter switch located here in the engine compartment. This higher voltage switch is actuated by a pull type control, conveniently located on the instrument panel. But while we're still discussing under the hood details, notice this rubber hose, the valve cover ventilator hose, which draws fumes out of the valve cover into the air cleaner by the vacuum of the engine. This ensures added ventilation of the crankcase even when the engine is idling for long periods of time. And here's an economy feature, the cooling system, with a capacity of only seven and a half quarts. Since it is also a pressure system, operating with three and a half to four and a half pounds of pressure, only a minimum amount of antifreeze is needed for maximum protection. Uh, for instance, an economical $2.37 worth of permanent antifreeze for zero protection. Water is circulated by a pump through holes of restricted size at the front of the block, which force water to the rear and then back to the front. Now for economy. The Metropolitan has averaged as high as 41 and 57 one hundredths miles per gallon in a controlled 24-hour non-stop test under ideal conditions. During this NASCAR supervised test, not one quart of oil or a drop of water was added and no adjustments or repairs were needed. Now, let's consider some other mechanical features that a prospect can't see without disassembling major components. Here is the head itself. It's of an extremely hard and durable cast iron, and it is not necessary to use valve seat inserts. The design of the head is such that cooling water is close enough to the seat to quickly dissipate heat giving long life operation. Now, the valve rocker arms are drilled to permit lubrication to the push rod sockets and onto the valve stem tips. This is a very important feature, one not even found in all higher priced overhead valve engines. This oil cushion reduces annoying valve tappet noises. And here's an interesting feature, a hot spot valve in the exhaust manifold to preheat the intake fuel for better economy. Now let's consider the pistons. This cut in the cam ground piston makes it a split skirt type, just as is used in our finest ambassador engine. It allows the piston to compress, giving quiet operation without piston slack. Each piston uses four rings. The compression rings tapered so only a small surface contacts the cylinder wall, and the fourth or oil wiper ring, 
well ventilated, so excess oil returns through the ring, through holes in the piston to lubricate the piston pins on the way back to the crankcase. From here we move to the connecting rods, so designed that the load on the bearing cap is not taken on the rod bolts. Still another feature for quiet, smooth engine operation is the timing chain for valve operation. Not only is the chain itself quieter than a gear drive, but valve timing remains correct longer because there is less wear in a chain drive. Now, something your technical 